Hey, Bowtie Nation, Joseph Hogue here with a break from our regularly scheduled programming. You know, I love picking stocks, and we've seen some great returns this year on stocks like SoFi, Weight Watchers, and Meta. But for a lot of investors out there, the best investing strategy is always going to be a set it and forget it strategy. You do what you do best to make money, and let the market do what it does best make you rich over the long term. So I want to share five index funds you can put in your portfolio and never have to worry about. I'll show you how to use these index funds as your entire investing strategy, where you don't even have to look at them more than once a year, or how to use it as a part of your strategy, along with those individual stocks we talk about here on the channel. This simple index fund portfolio will help you reach your financial goals with no stress and no market timing. And we're gonna start here with the big one, the iShares Core S&P 500 ETF, ticker IVV, the 500 biggest companies in the United States. Now this is gonna be your overall stock market fund, an index fund that's gonna give you the growth of the market by investing in the market. In fact, you can see how closely this ETF has tracked the index in these returns, nearly identical returns to the S&P 500 stock market index. And again, the fund does this by not trying to beat the index, but by being the index. It holds the S&P 500 companies in the same weightings as they're held in that stock market index. You can see the top 10 here or download all 500 on the website. Heavyweights like Apple, Microsoft, Amazon, and Nvidia. Now something I'll fix later with another fund, but this one is heavily weighted in tech stocks. Over 27% of the fund is invested in the sector because, well, again, that's just how the stock market is weighted by those largest companies in the United States. And I know this is gonna irk some of those Vanguard fans out there, so I wanna explain why I'm going with the iShares funds instead of this VOO or the VT. So first, why not invest in the Vanguard Total World Stock ETF, the VT instead? I mean, wouldn't owning the world stock market be better than just the US stocks? And there's two problems here. First is that Vanguard fund charges you twice as much to invest. You pay a 0.07% expense fee to hold shares in the VT versus just 0.03% to hold shares in the iShares S&P fund. Well then 0.07% isn't a lot either though. Maybe it's worth it to get that world stock market instead of just the S&P 500. Except look at the top holdings in that Vanguard Total World ETF. Does it look familiar? Here, I'll put up the top 10 stocks in the S&P 500 fund. Now do you see the similarity? Because the world stock market fund is weighted by the company size. More than 60% of it are those companies in the S&P 500, the largest companies in the United States. So besides paying twice as much to hold nearly the same group of stocks, that 40% in the world stock market outside the US, in my opinion, just kind of slows down the growth that you get from the best companies in the world. I've also talked about the Spider S&P 500 ETF, that ticker SPY before, as an option for stock investors looking for that broad index fund. So why not just invest in it instead of the iShares fund? Again, you're getting exactly the same thing, those 500 stocks, but paying three times more, an expense fee of 0.09% to hold the SPY instead. So as you're watching through this video, I want you to remember besides which index funds and ETFs to buy, uh, how to use this set it and forget it style of investing, all of which I'm gonna show you later, always remember, compare what's in the different index funds and always compare how much the fund is charging you in that expense fee. Again, to find the top 10 stocks in a fund, you can click on holdings here in Yahoo Finance and see the sector weights and those stocks or you can always go to the fund's website, look for holdings or portfolio, and click on the link to see all the stocks held in this group. We still have four more index funds to highlight for that no stress investing strategy, but even this simple portfolio is gonna be pointless if you don't start with an investing plan that is right for you. It's why I created this quick three-step guide to making your investing plan. Within five minutes, you'll be able to create an investing plan that makes your goals the motivation to keep investing and that is customized to your needs. I'll leave a link to that below in the description. It's totally free, just something I wanted to put together for all you out there in the community. So click through and get your step-by-step -step guide now. That S&P fund is gonna give you the broad stock market, but I wanna add a little growth here with the iShares Small Cap Equity ETF, ticker SMLF. And because the S&P 500 is ranked by the largest companies, holding just that index fund means you're gonna miss out on a lot of the potential growth in smaller companies. So I like to always add a US small caps to it. Compared to the holdings in the S&P index fund, like $3 trillion Apple, you probably haven't heard of many of these companies in this fund. The largest here, Jabil Inc., has a market cap of around 15 billion, and the smallest around $3 billion market size. So what I'm trying to do here is build a stock portfolio that is diversified so you participate in that overall stock market return, but also some added growth and some safety with cash flow that we'll add next. An important note here though, you're gonna notice I'm using exchange traded funds or ETFs as well as index funds in this list. 
In fact, a lot of times on YouTube, you're gonna hear the terms index funds and ETFs used interchangeably, but there is a very important difference. Now, an index fund is a group of investments based on one of those broad formal market indexes like the S&P 500, the Dow, or the NASDAQ 100. The stocks in these indexes may not share common themes like sectors, value, or growth, but are usually just those traded on a specific exchange or a specific size company. An index fund then is the same group of stocks bundled together and then shares of the entire group are sold to investors. Buying a share of the fund means you get the returns on everything in that group instead of having to buy hundreds or even thousands of stocks separately. And for this, you pay that small percentage fee, the expense fee to the manager. Now this might sound a lot like an exchange traded fund, an ETF, and it's because index funds are sold as ETFs or mutual funds. You buy them just like you would stocks and most you can buy with no commission. Now where the confusion sets in, not all ETFs are index funds. And I know that can be as clear as mud, but you see index funds invest in a broad benchmark group like the S&P 500 or the NASDAQ. The manager just replicates that index, so they're investing passively and have really no control over what goes into the fund. And that's different from a lot of theme ETFs, like for example here, the Vanguard High Dividend Yield Fund, ticker VYM, which I also like, but is not a true index fund. The VYM, like other non-index ETFs, bases its investments off a strategy or a theme, in this case, companies that pay above average dividend yields. Now by comparison, that S&P 500 is a broad stock market index. The NASDAQ 100 is a broad index of the 100 largest non-financial companies listed on its exchange, so more broadly defined and inclusive of all stocks in that group. So buying an index fund means you get that broad market exposure, you are the market, and you know you're gonna get that diversification and the return that you can only get from the entire market. Theme ETFs, though, don't give you that same entire market exposure, but it's a great way to add additional weight in your portfolio for a specific investment idea. For your set it and forget it portfolio, we want that broad market exposure we get from those index funds, but also that targeting that we get from some of the best ETFs in each of those assets. But here, I also want your opinion on this. Would you rather just invest across the entire market, so just those index funds, or do you want maybe the fine tuning that you get with your portfolio with those theme ETFs as well? So let me know in the comments if you prefer that broad be the market approach or if you'd also like to fine tune your portfolio with specific groups like growths or dividends. We're adding one of my favorite dividend funds next, the Schwab US Dividend ETF, ticker SCHD, with its 3.7% dividend. The Schwab ETF holds shares in 100 of the highest dividend payers within that large cap US market and includes a lot of the fast growth tech sector as well. Tech stocks make up 20% of the fund, giving it that return plus the 3.7% dividend. And you see here, the fund is covering all its bases with Coke and Pepsi, but also some of the dividend dividend stocks that you might not see in other dividend funds like Cisco Systems and Broadcom. The Schwab fund has beaten other dividend funds on a regular basis and produced a 13% annualized return over the past five years, so there's some solid growth here, but that's not why I'm adding this fund. Now, all you out there in the Bowtie Nation know I love dividends, but even all admit that compared to other buy and hold investments, dividends are an expensive way to invest. That's because any dividends you collect, whether you reinvest that money or take the money and run, you pay taxes on that cash flow every single year. For example, here look at two portfolios, $10,000 invested in a dividend fund and then 10 grand in a growth fund with no dividend. If both produce a 10% total return each year, but for the dividend fund, 4% of that return is from the dividend payments, you're worse off because of the taxes. Paying taxes every year on those dividends means you lose almost $20,000 compared to the no dividend portfolio. But then why I still love dividends, why I think every investor should have some dividend stocks or funds, because they are so motivating. Not only are dividends an important part of the market's total return, but you can't help getting excited when you see that dividend hit your portfolio. That's the kind of motivation that keeps you investing even when the market drops. Now for this next fund, we've already got an S&P 500 index fund, but I'm also adding the S&P Low Volatility ETF, ticker SPLV. And this one's for investors that wanna lower their risk a little in an all stock portfolio, investing in the stocks with the lowest volatility over the last year. The fund holds shares of the 100 stocks in the S&P 500 index with the least volatility, so the lowest price risk over the last year and you see it's those big mature companies like Coca-Cola, McDonald's, and Walmart. You can see the sector weightings here and compared to that broader stock market where we saw 27% was in tech stocks, this is much more focused on those older mature companies in the consumer staples, utilities, and healthcare. So by adding this low volatility ETF to a portfolio that also holds the S&P 500 index, you're just really balancing out your risks in that broader market. 
you're adding more of those safety stocks to even out the tech stocks found in the S&P overall. It's a great way to lower your risk and get a little higher dividend yield with a 2.5% yield. And more important than these index funds or the ETFs you buy is how you use them in a portfolio. I'm showing you these five funds here that are going to give you that broad stock market exposure, lower risk, dividend cash flow, and growth, but you need to know how to use these as part of your investing strategy. Now, if you are planning on that simple set it and forget it strategy where you only buy these five index funds or ETFs, investing just a little more each month, that is totally fine. In fact, it's probably the best investing strategy for 90% of the investors out there. You don't want the extra hours or stress that comes with stock picking. You just want to make sure that your money is working for you rather than earning next to nothing in a savings account. But if you are investing in individual stocks, this index fund strategy can be a hugely important part of your overall portfolio. It can help make sure you get those solid market returns, cut down the amount of time finding those individual stocks, and make sure you're investing in only the best. Using the core satellite strategy means investing 50 to 65% of your money across index funds and ETFs like these. It means you'll always earn that no worries stock market return along with the cash flows and growth that we're talking about with these funds. That is the core part of your portfolio. Then with the remaining 35 or 45% of your money, that satellite portion, you invest in those individual stocks you really like, the ones you think will outperform the market. You still get the chance to pick stocks that are gonna boost your portfolio, but the fact that it's only about a third of your money does some amazing things. First, with maybe just three to 5% of your money in each individual stock, it means you're only investing maybe 10 or 15 total stocks. That means you're not constantly chasing the next hot stock, spending hours of research on each. You find that handful of stocks that you really believe in and you don't have to watch some Yahoo and a bow tie help you find more. Also though, because you only have that three or 5% of your money in each individual stock and, and so much of your portfolio in those broad index funds, you don't have to worry about one stock destroying your future. You're not losing sleep when that one stock crashes and takes your dreams with it because you know you're still getting that market returns from the core index fund portion and the growth in those other stocks. Next, I'll reveal another ETF I'm buying that is gonna add some growth to this index fund portfolio, but don't miss this video for a ranking of my favorite exchange traded funds. I'll highlight the top ETFs and show you which to put in your portfolio. Our last ETF is adding max growth to the portfolio with the iShares self-driving EV and tech ETF, ticker IDRV. Electric vehicles have been a core growth target for the market over the last five years, but that focus could change very soon. San Francisco has already approved two companies for completely automated robo-taxis. And what's really interesting here, if you dig into ARC's $2,000 price target for shares of Tesla, it is almost all based on a self-driving robo-taxi future. Robo-taxis, the purple area here in these pie charts, are expected to be almost half of Tesla's revenue and more than two thirds its stock value by 2027. So with this IDRV ETF, you get exposure to both electric vehicle theme, but also that next generation growth in self-driving and the companies involved in both. Now this fund is gonna be more volatile, investing in those growth themes. So that's why I added some of that stability with the low volatility ETF. But over that longer term, you should also get higher returns. Don't miss your chance to reach your financial goals. Get your custom investing plan free with the link I'll leave in the description below, or click on the video to the right for the ETFs I'm buying and how to invest in exchange traded funds. Don't forget to join the Let's Talk Money community by tapping that subscribe button and clicking the bell notification.